the glorious reign of Pope Pius XIII. Last week, Tim and I did a video on who will be the next Pope. And we went through all the various candidates of who we'd like to see to be Pope, and then who will most likely be Pope, which is very disappointing. Go back and watch that video. And towards the end, we went into our happy place of what we would like the next Pope to look like and what he would do. And a lot of y'all in the comments are like, please do a video on the glorious reign of Pius XIII, who is really just a figment of our imagination, actually a... <laughs> the platonic form of our combined minds of what a Pope should be. So we're going to do that today. Before we do, we're recording this on March 7th. And March 7th is the real feast day of St. Thomas Aquinas. After Vatican II, he was bumped and moved to January. But the day of his death is March 7th. So happy feast day of St. Thomas Aquinas on his real feast day. Uh, I did a video a few months ago on the death of Thomas Aquinas, which happened again, March 7th. And um, I do it with a, a brain doctor. And we look at the evidence in the Latin manuscripts of how Thomas Aquinas died. So up in the right-hand corner, you'll see a little, a little eye. If you click on that, you can link over to that video on the death of Thomas Aquinas. Also, uh, I wrote a little book to help people get started in Thomas Aquinas. And it's this one, Thomas Aquinas in 50 pages. If you go to my website, taylormarshall.com, you can download that for free. It is your gift on the feast day of Thomas Aquinas or whenever. Just go to taylormarshall.com. Over on the right side, you can download that free ebook. If you'd like a paperback copy, like the one I'm holding here, and you'd like me to sign it, go over to Patreon and support me at Patreon, and I'll sign one of these, and within the next week, I'll send it to your mailbox, and you'll have a signed copy. And there's some other options over there as well. And then just one more thing. If you want to get deep into Thomas Aquinas, um, I'm the founder of the New St. Thomas Institute, which provides eight certificate curricula on apologetics, Catholic philosophy, Thomism, theology, church history, New Testament studies, and this year we're rolling out Christ in the Old Testament, which is a Catholic Old Testament study. So go check that out at NewStThomas.com, NewStThomas.com. Okay, that's all my Thomas Aquinas stuff. Tim, how are you? I'm well. I, uh, I like your shirt today. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Um, I was worried. You know, sometimes people like Sorry. diss us because we're wearing sweaters and coats, but it's it's actually pretty cold here in Texas, and uh, I film above my, this is above the garage, so it's detached from the house, and uh, it can get a little chilly in the morning when we wake up early and do these, so um, sometimes it's cold, I have to put on a jacket, but this morning I woke up and put the heat on, and it's getting pretty good, so I'm in short sleeves. Ah, yeah, no, I, I like that, it's kind of a Russell Westbert type exactly. shirt. Exactly. Why would anyone diss sweaters and coats? Well, there is that, there is that one cold. episode in the Deep of Winter. You're wearing a coat, and I'm wearing a coat. And, uh, that was and they're like, dude, why are you wearing a coat? All right. Looked like Ideal explorers. Pope. So we're calling him Pius the 13th, just because Piuses are awesome. Yeah. yeah. All the way going back to the first Pius. All the you know what's interesting? Yeah. is there's uh, You just made me think of this. I didn't even think about it when we talked about doing this show last night. There is enough knowledge among Hollywood secular left screenwriters to know mm. if you're going to make an odious figure out of a future imaginary pope, call him Pius the Thirteenth, because there was a was it a Netflix show that ran at least through last uh, year? It was HBO. The HBO. That's it. He, and that was Pius, he was Pius the Thirteenth. Yeah, I was, it was like it was Jude Law played um, Pope Pius. I watched some of it, and it turned out to be. Um, a little scandalous, a lot of skin, and a lot of inappropriate um, adult contact outside the bonds of marriage happen in that. So uh, you, want, you want to turn that off, maybe not watch it. The best thing to do is to go on YouTube and just watch the, the really dope clips of the young Pope. Have you seen those, Tim? Uh, I was. I saw one where he, he goes kind of AP on everyone. Yeah, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't even... I think I've seen the most famous clip in the whole thing, but I wasn't even, yeah, I don't even, I'm not even going to watch it. I just think it's funny yeah. and a bit of a tell that even secular Hollywood writers know if you're going to make an odious right-wing pope, call him Pius the 13th. I wonder who told them, because they don't know, 
I mean, I live 100 miles from Hollywood, and they don't know much about the church. They like to they like to ape it. Mm-hmm. They like to mock it. Um, but they don't. It's usually from a position of utter embarrassed, shame faced, yeah, ignorance. So it's. I just thought it was striking that they knew to do kind of what we're doing in reverse. Yeah, you know, I. I didn't know you knew about that show, but I, I didn't watch any of it. Yeah, the famous that the, one clip. The clip, the really the clip that's worth watching of anything in it is the uh, the one you mentioned where he's crowned in his papal tiara. Yeah, he's totally decked out in medieval attire, going back to Pius the Twelfth days, and he basically balls out the cardinals in the Sistine Chapel and says, okay, "Hey, is he like, hey?" You know, we've tried to be open to the world. We've tried to be accommodating. We've tried to update. We've tried to modernize. He's the Pope right after Francis. That's the story. Mm-hmm. And where has mm-hmm. it got us? Nowhere. Mm-hmm. And he goes, from now on, we're just going to withdraw. We're going to be quiet. It's a great, I do like that. It's a great clip. Like that. It's a great clip. I mean, as we do a Pius XIII bid, and I, I mock the, the um, embarrassed childlike idiocy of the left when it comes to well, pretty much everything, but... But when it comes to the Roman church, I will say this much. I do like that. I mean, that is how Pius XIII should be, and that is how he should do. And they're probably just saying, see, look, we called it, we're so wise. Uh, There will be a pope, you know, in my dreams that acts that way and speaks that way some point after Francis, and he might be the one called Pius XIII, and then they'd be like, who called it? HBO. Like, yeah, yeah, HBO. <laughs> they know so much about the church. Yeah, so you know he's he's smoking his cigarettes and wearing his shades and and uh, you know it's interesting too. There's another clip that you can watch on YouTube. <clears throat> um, actually, Michael Vorce and I were just talking about it recently. There's a, another clip besides the one in the in the Sistine Chapel where he's up on the loggia addressing the people below. And what's remarkable about it is he's he's talking about contraception and abortion and euthanasia and women's ordination and priests sleeping with priests and all these things. And it's like HBO, this secular godless station, has right. nailed it. Right, And you hear so often, well, so many Catholics in the pews, they don't really know about humana vitae. They don't know about contraception. They, maybe they don't really know abortion's wrong or that euthanizing, euthanizing grandma is a sin, mortal sin. They know. People know. When we walk around mm-hmm. with our large family, people will either say, are y'all Mormon or Catholic? Because mm-hmm. they know that Catholics traditionally have big families and are opposed to contraception. Boom. They either talk trash or they oh, admire. they talk trash. There's, there's no middle ground. Yeah, they well, talk some trash. people admire it. I mean, some do. You, yeah. you, you, it, but it's one or the other. That's the point. People are either hot or cold on a big family. People are either hot or cold on abortion. So you're right. This is this is the effect that the natural law works. Right. Yeah. It. People do know. But I mean, further further that it's just like, it's it's funny that they're putting this guy forward as a cautionary example. You know, we're about to yeah. basically describe. I didn't watch it, so I don't. Maybe, maybe he's not that good. I, I heard he's more political or something. Once the show yeah. gets going, but but they're putting that kind of behavior forward as a cautionary example. Like, oh, like, this could happen. This he's is wearing the papal tiara. He's evil. He's evil. I'm like, that's that's actually kind of. He cool. looks like a pope. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. This pope looks like a pope. Yeah. You know, I mean, so we put it forward as, yep, that's what he should be. And um, this is the degree, I guess, reflected to which we just flat out disagree with all these people, yeah. HBO types. But whatever. It, it's worth mentioning. I didn't think about it until the second before this, the little neuron synapse thing connected right before I said it. Yeah. All right, Pius the Thirteenth, and we got the last one was Pius the Twelfth. He was Pacelli during World War II. Uh, pretty, pretty good Pope, and um, Pope Francis just opened up some archives to investigate. It looks like maybe it's canonization. We'll see. Hmm. So, okay, so what happens is the current Pope Francis resigns or dies, and then just this miraculous outpouring of the Holy Ghost, a new Trentecost happens. 
the Council mm-hmm. of Trent is downloaded and infused into the hearts of all the cardinals. Mm-hmm. And they think, oh my goodness, we need a pope like Pius V or Pius X. And so they go into conclave and they unanimously vote. I don't know who would be, maybe it's Burke. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's like, you know, any baptized male can be elected. Let's choose Tim Gordon, Taylor Marshall, bring us in. We're like, bye Steph or bye Joy, bye kids. Put on the white cassock, Pius the Thirteenth. So here's our happy place. We're going into our happy place. This is our um, what do they liberals call it? The safe zone. What do they call these? Safe, 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 safe space. space. Yeah, we're going into our safe space right now. So I just heard this used non-ironically the other day. And, really? Uh, I, I shouldn't say the context, but I, I nearly, you know, did a, you know, I had, I had my coffee, and I, they said safe space. Non ironically, I nearly did a spit take. I was right. like, only I thought I didn't know again, I didn't know anyone said that non ironically. Did you say, dude, I can't be your friend anymore? You're hilarious. Yeah, it, it wasn't a friend. Oh, okay. It wasn't a friend. Yeah, it was a uh, oh, that's all I can say. But yes, safe space. This is this is a combination of a like happy Gilmore's happy place <laughs> and a safe space. It's happy and safe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean wait, so in that case. Just just because I think, you know, it's a 50-50, there's a 50% chance you will be the next pope and 50% me. That's what an odds maker told me. Yeah. Wait, so you wouldn't be able to bring one, neither of us would be able to bring our family? Because, I mean, you, you're still a, mari- uh, yeah, I a guess, married man. Well, you can't. So traditionally this has happened where married men have been elected. And yeah. so you're just bound to continent. So no uh, coital relations for the rest of your pontificate. You can go. You okay. can go. Hey, Steph, and get the side. Hu- you can get the side hug. Yeah, but you couldn't bring her out in the loggia and announce your papacy and like give her a big smooch. Even if Smoochie Fernandez was there and was like, "Heal us with your mouth," you could. He's like, do "Heal it. your what? Heal your and, heal your marriage." And that would be mouth. my first acting. Like you were deposed. Oh, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Smoochie Fernandez. But yeah, you, if you're a married man uh, and you're elected pope, you no more relations. So yeah, I guess she could come and like. Be your chaste housekeeper with yeah, the kids, just, yeah. Like friend, and uh, she could, she could be the. I, I give. She'd be the keeper of the keys of Barbarigo. Oh, there we go. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, the guardian cause, of cause, the third secret. Yeah, I don't. I don't trust anyone more than my wife. You know, on I don't know. I, I, I kind of know Steph. I think she'd be out there tweeting it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> she, she'd understand the gravity and right. she, she would be uh she'd be she would a, say pope pius the 13th defendant. said don't show this to anyone but for the sake of souls screenshot <laughs> you know <laughs> there it is only if there's a if, only if there's like a battle to be had then yeah. i would just no i think i think my battle. wife would just at that point she would just say if the kids were already raised she would just say all right i'm gonna be a nun Really? She'd be a nun, yeah. She'd probably be like a Benedictine nun. Yeah. Praying for me, support me. Yeah. And this, yeah. I think that's how it would shake down in the pontificate of Pius XIII Marshal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Pius, whoever it is, it's it's 50 50, you or me, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Burke or who, whomever. Or maybe they just say Schneider coming from Kazakhstan. Here he is. So what, what, we go out on the loggia, we announce it. Obviously, you give the papal blessing. You don't do any of this like, I want y'all to pray for me. Mm-hmm. You know, Bless me. You know what Pius X did when he became pope? He went out, yeah, on, the, he went out on the balcony, turned his back to the people. I already like it. And gave, <laughs> gave the ubi et orbi <laughs> pontifical blessing with his back to them toward St. Peter. As Ad a, orientum. At, yeah. as, a, as a public protest against the Italian government taking away the papal states. Yeah, see, that's just... That's boss. That's just, you just like that. Yeah. If you, if you know what's I think I best. would do that, and then the commentators are like, why is he doing this? What's he protesting? He's just like, just he just wants everything. to be like, <laughs> yeah, everything. <laughs> he just wants to piss everyone <laughs> off. Yeah. I would just, I would be, I would want to be described later as, the Pope who set the modern world on fire. Yeah. And just any time I could be actually mine would be the Pope who sent who set the modernist on fire. Yeah. Or or just yeah. a modernist yeah. on fire. I just I literally 
set them on. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. That, yeah. And, and you could get away. Can with you it. imagine if Francis had turned around and put his back to the people when he was elected Pope and made the sign of the, made the blessing and sign of the cross away from them into the church and not into the people? Can Even you imagine? No, no. That's That'd what Pius the 10th did. So. I could imagine it if it was Pius the 10th. I couldn't yeah. imagine it. Pius the 10th was such a boss. And you know what? He was a Pole. Both his parents were ethnic Poles from Poland. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, they changed the name to Sarto. It's something Polish that I can't pronounce the last name, but they changed it to Sarto, which means Taylor. Oh, they changed it. I always wondered. I always they wondered how how Sarto was his name. It sounds so uh, Latin. You know, it sounds like Spanish. Or yeah, it is. It Italian. is. Yeah, they changed it back then. They, you know, there wasn't this whole like accept me because I'm different minority. Back right. then, people just assimilated. Right. Right. You know, go along to get along. Okay, wow. so so get on the low should turn our back to the people, Pius the Tenth style, ad orientum blessing that doesn't really go to the people, goes back into the church, St. Peter's. And then I, I think what I would do is I would immediately recall all red hats. Sure. I would say, everyone, I would like you to resign from the College of Cardinals. And what I would do though, just in case I died and there would be no cardinals to elect the next pope, I would probably do it in stages. So mm -hmm. I would say Cardinals A through M, you resign this week. And then I'll appoint 35 Cardinals. Mm -hmm. And then Cardinals M through Z or N through Z, you resign next week and I'll assign another 35 cards. Because you wouldn't want a gap where there's no Cardinals. Like they all resign right. and someone shoots you in the head. You're assassinated and there's no Cardinals to elect the next Pope. So you'd have you to just, phase you it. You just destroyed the pontificate forever. <laughs> no one can elect a Pope. Again. They're like, that yeah. Pius XIII was an idiot. That Pisces 13 was a live. This is how those things yeah. start. All right. Yeah, that's 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 what I said uh, too. Uh, I would I would do the same thing. I, you know, you could leave like two. Uh, I would just be like, if there mm -hmm. were like my two buddies, I'd be like, right. Try you got you guys have to go as well. But but I'm gonna leave you on a, a week longer. You get the honorary uh, two right. two college week where it's just a college mm -hmm. of cardinals. It's too deep. Yeah, and, and people ask why. You know, I, I was we were talking about this in a couple shows ago. It's like, what the the best thing that radio talk show host Mark Levin was always saying, you could do is just like, look, all of you have proven untrustworthy. Um, so what we should do, what would be his, I guess, dream situation and mine, would be to just recall basically everyone in the Congress, Republicans and Democrats. I mean, the Republicans, obviously Democrats. We don't have to talk about Republicans have failed us. And we're just going to give new blood, fresh blood, a shot, young bloods. Like, let's just get them in and see what we can do. And I'm going to I'm going to be drawing for my replacements for those guys from from typically unorthodox spots. You know, I'm going to I'm going to go. I'm not going to be going. Wait, when you say unorthodox, offices. what do you mean? Unorthodox? You're going to pull cards from unorthodox spots? Yeah. Well. Oh, you mean uh, pull them out, a, pull them out. Yeah. Not pull, pull them no, in. I mean, oh, gotcha. Yeah, of course. Well, not, no, 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 not theologically unorthodox from, oh. from in, going by well, the dude, rules on of TNT, thumb. orthodox has a univocal definition. It just means. On TNT, we have, we have some, <laughs> some LBs walks in that are like, wait, what? Yeah. No, I mean. You not, mean unusual well, spots. Well, I mean, I mean, unorthodox in, in the common usage of, uh, you know, a spot isn't, it, it's not a religious place. Right. It just means. According to the abiding culture, right? Well, I, so, some people might think he's going to pull him from nuns on the bus. You know, like that's an unorthodox spot. Well, any place where they're not typically chosen. So I, the first thing I would do is say, like, chanceries, maybe even standing bishops, right? Are I mean, I would probably have to move this process down to the episcopate as well and say, okay, I'm, I'm going to basically do the same thing. Yeah, I thought about know? that. I just, I think maybe I would wait a little bit before I started pulling bishops. Because that's so, that's so difficult, you know. You're talking about thousands and thousands. Like the research and all that that would go into that would be pretty difficult. But the cardinals is something you could really do in within a month. You could. Or a week. I, I just, I think... This is what always perplexes me about even the. I mean, may, I mean, it's it's a 
it's a show we're doing, a one one off show we're doing on it. And there are, you're right, other practical implications. It's like, OK, if you actually became Pope, you'd have to look at this more than a half hour to research a show. <laughs> but it's not that hard at all to if your prime criterion is to get faithful conservatives, you know, even if they might not be the best liturgists, but 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 they'll support the faithful the faithful liturgy. It's not that hard to get uh, great advisors when it comes to ecclesiology or, or you know, the yeah. curia. I, yeah, I mean, I could, I'm just be putting in, you still make the first substitutions based on people that, you know, you make your cr- prime criterion, just got to be faithful well, and conservative. And it's like, yeah, you might, we might be involving some lay people in the process. We might be we're gonna do. What I wouldn't do any lay. I wouldn't do any lay. What I would do is I would I would draft because right away and the t- off the top of my head I know twelve that I would throw in, right? And you get those twelve in, and then you get them in a room, and you're like, "All right, we need to build this number up to 70. Mm-hmm. You guys help me know who who are your friends, who are the solid guys on planet Earth, who like Schneider, who do you know, you know? Mm-hmm. And I would bring those guys in. But I, I, you, so you would trust the twelve because I think second hand starts getting. Second hand becomes. Well, who else are you going to trust? You're going to go r- go out and do interviews. Pull, no, I think I would trust my. I don't know if I trust seventy people. I might not have. I might not have seventy to be honest. Okay, that's that's another option Cardinals. because yeah, you know, it's got to be not one fly in the ointment. That like well, this is that's what impossible. this is what Prague's That's impossible. No, you're gonna, you you're going to have a guy who turns on you. That's just how if a guy business turns works, man. In the office, then then he turns. But you have to start out with you have to start out with with certainty, as as close as you can. What we call substantial certainty in the law that there just aren't any double agents. And however, that would be that would be the focus of anything I do that involves, uh, you know, the the curia yeah. or whatever. The I kind of I kind of like this. What I would do is so you you take everybody's hats and then you keep a core of 10 or 12 and then maybe you build that out over the next year that way if you do get assassinated you know you got a core that's true i mean that's what i'm saying you don't have to you don't have to you you get rid of all the bad ones first and all the mediocre ones and all everyone except your best buddies and if you forget to replace them later you're not bad off Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the point is, so the point is that I did get in, I could probably think we would probably think of more strategic like tactics for going about this that would be more efficacious if we thought about it more. But the point is you got to build yourself a solid foundation. And yeah. it's just these are all just sons of the church and it's not that they agree with me on like, you know, something subjective, what the best color is. What 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 is your favorite animal when you were a kid and you're playing What's your the favorite liturgical game? color? It's not that which that's getting a little closer to the mark, right? What <laughs> what is your favorite liturgical color? It is it, it should be black. Yeah, they say be black, black and purple cassock. because of penance right now, and you're like, thank you. How do you feel about red? Because you just got a cardinal's hat. <laughs> yeah, <I> like, <laughs> yeah. How do I ding, feel? Ding, ding. Let me answer your question with a question. How do you feel about black? How do you feel about red? Yeah, Cardinal Jones. Yeah, yeah. That so would be, that would be the other thing that I would do is I would imme- it would be I would set the liturgy to 1950 standards pre pre Bugnini Holy Week. Cool. I would have a solemn papal pontifical high mass. All my masses would be inside churches and not on the steps of churches. So I wouldn't be doing these masses on the steps of St. Peter or the Lateran Basilica. They'd be inside the church. Right, and then people would say like, "Well, Agreed. not everybody can get in there." Well, not everybody can get in the St. Peter's Square either. We have TVs right. now. If you want to see what's going on, watch it on TV. Right. And uh, did you know in the old uh, papal masses, it was the custom that at the gospel it would be chanted in Latin and Greek by a Greek deacon. Yes, I think I have. That's heard so that, money. Actually. I would have that all the time. Yeah, and I'd have those yeah. fans. And then I would also make sure to wear the papal. I would be instead of being installed as pope, which sounds so pedestrian, mm-hmm. I would be coronated, be mm-hmm. crowned, be crowned. Well, that's that's where the papal tiara comes in. Yeah, I'd be yeah, wearing the tiara. What I would do, what I would do, just just to, to piss off CNN and MSLSD uh, and and all of the affiliates, 
I would, I, when I was being like giving any address, you know, or even like asked a question at a synod or something, I'd give the answer in Latin Yeah. and I'd be like, Oh, you need, you need a translator. And then I would have just a guy sitting behind me that would be the translator and he would translate the Latin into Greek only. Yeah. 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 So that'd that, be awesome. That'd be awesome. That'd be like, I translated for you. You speak Greek, right? But uh, it would be, it would be, it would be Koine or like liturgical Greek. It wouldn't be modern Greek. Sure. So all their, their, the guys they hired that know Greek, they would all be confused. Right. But the, the, the joke really lands when you put it in the, uh, uh, you know, illiterate, illiterate American right. liberal journal, news journalist context because they're like, oh, he's going to translate. And then they're like, not into your English. English. Yeah. Yeah. No. I like it. I like it. I thought you were, or aren't you smart? Like you, you didn't know Latin because you hate the church. So I'm sure you know Greek. Right. And then, yeah, that would, yeah. But that, I mean, can you imagine just from the outset, these guys, Painted up Pius the Thirteenth. They don't really get on HBO to go back to that for a second. They don't really get why he's doing the things that they depict that he's doing that are kind of accidentally good. They just know it's the opposite of what they do. Yeah, it's and then not some Francis. of what he does, I think, is very he's it's it's un Francis. Yeah, right? it's like whatever he's Francis would do, do the opposite. Do the opposite. Which like, is basically doesn't which Dwight shoot? George doesn't Costanza. doesn't Dwight on the Office say? Whenever I think about doing something, I always say, what would an idiot do? And then I do that. And, <laughs> and I wouldn't do that thing. And then I thing. wouldn't do yeah, that, that thing. That yeah, that's what so that's kind of what they did with, with uh, Pius XIII. They said, what would Francis do in this situation? I would not, he would not do that thing. And so they make Pius do that. And this idiot, Pius XIII, would be so conservative. But it's like, okay, so they would, they would be making of it, besides saying, wow, we're so wise, we just use the un-Francis Dwight Schrute rule, and look what we depicted here. Uh, we, we did a character sketch of this guy. They would also be maybe, I mean, they'd be trying to figure it out. You know, they would be well, like, okay, so what it's are the not that It's not that difficult when you step back and you think, okay, you're a bunch of liberals in Hollywood. You just had eight years of Barack Obama, and that was a fun fest. And then we got this mean guy named trump well what if the church was like that so we had these you know eight years of obama aka francis and then we get a trump pope that's what the show is you know that's that's true they just basically took american political ideas and thrust it upon the church and made it entertaining it's probably actually exactly what happened (laughs) you know they feed everything through the trump filter exactly yeah so this that's really what the uh, it's called the young pope right yeah young pope on hbo oh that is it yeah, yeah. The young pope okay so um so the liturgy would would be pontifical latin masses no more bugnini holy week no more bugnini novus ordo um i would immediately just regularize the society of saint pius the 10th i'd be sure. like you guys have a personal prelature or ordinary it whatever whichever you want I just sign, sign on the line. I already signed it. You guys sign it. Um, They'd probably be like, we're, we're being, that's cool. We're regularized, but we're being rendered useless because right before I did that, I would be like, by the way, um, I w- I'm announcing the social kingship of Christ, <laughs> right. which is their big thing. <laughs> yeah. And they'd be like, that's our issue, bro. Cause that's how, that's yeah. how some of these guys get. They, they want it to be their issue. It's yeah. like, no, you, the, the point is you're mainly right. It's just the Catholic issue. Right. So I would go, no, just just because I like I like I like teasing all sides a, a bit. They are right about that, by the way. Uh, uh, Lefebvre mm-hmm. was right about the social kingship of Christ. Definitely, big, right. he's by, definitely right. By the way, you, you're definitely right about the social kingship of Christ. It is the purpose of the Great Commission. We are supposed to talk about more than just natural law. Mm-hmm. I, I have my 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 buddy Chris in my mind as I'm saying all this. Uh, religious, whatever France has just signed, religious tolerance, it, it, it's the culmination of six years of this and right. really 50 years before that. Religious tolerance is fine only as a political principle, but except we can't acknowledge that when somebody freely elects polytheism or any of the wrong religions, that this is a good thing and God actively wills it because that's garbage. No, that's, that's, you know and, what that is? It's Freemasonic and differentism. It's That's what the Freemasons Freemason. wanted in the 1700s and 1800s, and now we right. have a pope who actually talks like that. Who talks just like that. Yeah. 
But but yeah, the, the whole point of the Great Commission in the gospel is that we go and we make followers of Jesus Christ, of all nations, of Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah, and not, his gospel, we're not, not like, food. hey, all nations, you should follow natural law. Check out this book by Aristotle. Right. No, right. we want to conform society to the kingship of Christ the, Christ the king. Right. And words, we want something great. like we Poland talk- where they're like, hey, you know what? Maybe we should have blue laws on Sunday where people don't work on Sunday because that's Catholic. Or maybe we should have Mary as the queen of our na- symbolic titular queen of our nation, which they did in Poland. Yeah, and our money, uh, things like that. Yeah. that. That symbolic stuff actually matters. I, I get. I think this. I think it's a really, really, really fine issue. I because I'm not an integralist, so when it comes into building it into the laws, I get I get old uber squeamish. But all the symbolic stuff matters. Announcing it and being like, look, you don't have to be a Roman Catholic here, but all of the niceties, all of your rights, natural law rights do come from it. And then even supernaturally, you're getting goodies that Mm -hmm. stem from the fact that we have announced, even though we're a republic and people have asked, how do you do this as a republic? Let's say, well, now, now I've transferred over to me. Now you're going to another highest. (laughs) Now you're going to a new happy place. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. Other other happy place. But we're we're talking about, no, I'm just, I'm just Pope. I'll, I'll settle. Okay, for that. Yeah, let's just settle. Let's just, okay, so we announced. We, My we, parents still aren't proud of me. I'm, the, I'm just Pope. But the the reign, uh, the US reign of president. Christ the King is. Yeah, then the society would be like. So you were, you announce the reign of Christ the King, and everybody has Latin Mass. What do we do anymore? No, I know. And I would say saying. your job is to train everybody. That's what I would do. Sure. M- maybe I'd pull. Maybe I'd pull like. 50 to 100 bishops from their priests and say, okay, you got to go out there and train people. You got to, we got to get the seminaries, you know, corrected. We need major reform. That's, so exactly. See, in, in the fraternity and in, Institute of Christ the King, I would, I would start having those guys lead. Of course, you're going to have a ma- We haven't even mentioned this major world schism right now when nuns on the bus and liberal cardinals lose their hats. There's definitely going to be a parallel church set up of, of whacked out liberals. Sure. Let them have it. It's like, uh, see ya. Extra Ecclesium, Nola Solis. And then they're like, they're like, we're, we're leaving and we're taking the cathedral too. And you know, that big, ugly, enormous stack of bricks, take it. Enjoy, take enjoy it. that mortgage. Take yeah. it. Take, uh, take the uh, Paul the Sixth Conference Center too while you're at it. <laughs> yeah. You, you and you snakes. <laughs> yeah. You know? Exactly. No, no. See, that's what I, we. I didn't think about it at the time, but exactly. You could. I know. I know the. Uh, the SSPX temperament, they'd be getting fidgety because they're like, you're not acknowledging we were right all along. It's like, no, I'm acknowledging you weren't. No, I 90, think I think they'd be I think right. they'd be pumped. I think they'd be pumped. Hopefully. Yeah. But they would be the ones that could be the trainers. I like that. Yeah. yeah. You just like, wait, yeah. Filet is Cardinal Filet now? You're like, that's correct. That's Cardinal correct. Filet. I'm like, wow. Not even Ratzinger was open to that. That's right, because I'm Pius the thirteenth. The the skeptic in me always always goes to I'm mainly just joking, but I, I I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure with some of the temperaments there. I think they might go, well, you said your favorite color is blue or green, so we can't we got to be out. Some some <laughs> no. of them like like the rebels. Some right. of them like yeah the yeah. Heroes, there but, there probably would be some there yeah there would be a minority who would say yes. this is a modernist plot. Yeah, I'd be like it's not yeah, or they they just say it's modernist just because it's mainstream and it's like. Dude, I like you guys. I want you to be. You're you're all cardinals if you want it. Right. You trade. You're all my filler guys. You just you yeah. We're just we're just we're mainstreamizing it. Like yeah. you know how like you could do this with all wish lists because I always I've never supported anything mainstream in my entire life. Even style of music. If it becomes mainstream, that's a good thing. And there's there's different temperaments among your friends that also yeah. like non mainstream things. Yeah. And some of them are like, well, I just wanted it to be just our thing. It's like, no, dude, the idea is to evangelize the whole world with the truth and to make this the mainstream point of view. Now, everything popular is stupid throughout human history. But with it, with this is a new this is a this is a third Pentecost. It's a right? Trentacost. It's a Trentacost. Yeah. This is a yeah. Trentacost. We're all getting tre- Trentacostal. Okay, so we handled the liturgy. Uh, we handled the cardinals. We didn't. We're, we're gonna. I am gonna wait on the bishops because I got to rebuild the curia. That's the next thing is you got to rebuild the curia. Oh, before we get to that, I would just announce from henceforth all World Youth Days are canceled. 
<laughs> I don't do of that. <laughs> of course. I, actually, what I would say Sorry. is if you want a World Youth Day, on the, I would pick a feast. Maybe it's like Corpus Christi or something that has a procession. I would say, look, youths of the world, come to the Lateran Basilica. Oh, I might actually move back to the Lateran Basilica. I need to look into that. I would say come to the ladder in Basilica. It's dope. Yeah. I live right near it. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's it's awesome. Dope. Yeah. Could it, it would just it would just say even more like I'm old world. I'm old world right. order. Like right. St. Peter's, that's new. Right. I'm old ladder in. I would say World Youth Day, come to Ladder in Basilica. And I'll have mass inside the basilica. And then I'll process the blessed sacrament with a bunch of youth. Y'all can all follow me around and Maybe we'll do, if I wasn't old, we'll, we'll walk to the seven churches and then I'll give you a pontifical blessing and then everybody go back to your countries. That's it. No bands, no dancing, no cheesiness, you know, just youth, youth going to mass, yeah, youth worshiping the sacrament. That's it. You, youth going to the new, and you have no options in your vulgar modern language masses. You, you all go, the, uh, you can have the inaugural mass. Many of them would be the first Latin mass. Tridentine mass. mass, yeah. And I would just say, okay, and also no doing anything youthful. You all have to act like 90-year-olds yes. with uh, sticks up your rear ends. And then I would have them all bring – I would have a big symbolic uh, – just because it's World Youth Day, it's kind of associated with Earth Day, and I would want to thumb the eye. So I'd, I'd have them throwing their recycling bins into a trash can, <laughs> and I would say no, no more recycling right, either. Right. This is this is the this is old world order, and yeah. I will reign absolute. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is getting all right. Fantastic. Yeah. I would also have. I would also. It'd be so amazing at the Lateran. You know, behind the apps in the Lateran. Yeah. It has all the seats and then the high throne where the Pope sits. I would be there and I would have my 12 to 20 cardinals in that or seating arrangement. And I would sit there and just let let photos happen. That would be dope, right? Yeah. You mean the, the, yeah, the Scala Sante is there just a little bit north and then what you're calling behind is a little bit west. No, I'm talking about the inside the Lateran. Inside, mm -hmm. there's the high altar. Beyond the mm -hmm. high altar is a, is a semicircular apse. With a yeah. with a thrown up high, yeah, inside the ladder, and that's where I would be. I'd be right there. Yeah, because the because uh, St. John and Ladder and faces east. It faces mm -hmm. people that don't know. It faces basically due east, and yes. it faces toward uh, Santa Croce and Jerusalem, which mm -hmm. is the smallest of the big seven basilica. Right, and it's only about Talk about a mile or less, right? Just half a mile, yeah. and there's a park in between. This right, is, this is the park I would train for the marathon at. So you're facing, you're running west, heading towards Santa Croce, running east, uh, sorry, other way around, running west when you head towards San Giovanni. And yeah, when you're facing it, as you go towards the back of the church, you're going toward the apse. And I would also make, I would get more usage out of that giant statue of St. Bartholomew, where he's, he's cutting all, all right. of, he's cutting his face off. I'd just be like, you just is the, stand in front is, of it and to have people yeah, take pictures. Be like, I'll cut your face off, dog. Yeah. Like, I'm going to cut you. Yeah, spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it'd just be an old world order, and I'd come up with, like, some hand signals. It would be dope. Mm, that'd be, yeah. I don't know about that. The only one I would do would be this hand signal right here. That's right. Yeah, it, would just, it would be the announcement of... We're going, oh, you know we're what going else back. I would do to help the ladies? Because the there'd be all these young ladies showing up for my ladder and youth day. I would say, if you wear a veil, a mantilla, plenary indulgence every time you do it, every Mass... Just to inspire them. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I would just say it would be Tridentine, so they have to. Anyway. Well, just to get them kind of, you know, fired up. Psych like, did you hear what All the Pope right. said? You get a plenary indulgence if you do this? And like, yeah, let's do it. Maybe after a few years, I would pull that back in. I don't know. Maybe I'd leave it yeah. in the books. I don't know. Death penalty for not wearing. <laughs> no, no, no. Start out incentivizing no. it and right. then it gets, and gets then ugly three years later. Take away the carrot, bring in a stick. Bring in a stick, yeah. See now I'm we're actually getting to mistake. HBO levels. See people are watching like, oh, <laughs> see they see they Pius the Thirteenth really would be a jerk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I would be a jerk. So that would be so. Yeah, no World Youth Days. I really don't like those anymore. I, you know, when I was a little bit younger, I thought it's kind of cool, like it's fostering vocations. Now I look at them, it's just the whole thing is a cringe fest. It's like, please stop, stop making can, it hurt, stop hurting me. I can honestly say. 
that when I was young, I was 10 times more against it than even now. And now I'm like, <laughs> this is vomity, you know? Well, it was right. like a breakdancing priest out of one corner and like yeah. a rapping priest. Everyone's like, you guys are, are lame. That's cringy. Like, you, yeah. you just understand your place. That's not it. Yep. People, I'm surprised so many conservatives buy into it, though. I'll bet you some Well, it was a big JP2 thing. Now, it was a big yeah, JP2 I know, thing. But even not just, we, we've christened all these, we've, we've christened all these ships, made all these neologistic terms. I, I, I think a lot of people, maybe conservatives who are to the right of what we've christened a JP2 Catholic, I think a lot of them might secretly like it. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out when you We'll find out. Did. Yeah, we'll, but, get, we'll get complaints. I agree about all. I mean, yeah, I'm not. We didn't talk about this ahead of time. I'm like, this is all good. I mean, this is. So why doing this show is easy because I'm usually like, yeah, I, I never feel like I'm I'm having to pump the brakes or distinguish or say me too. Like literally, World Youth Day would just be done. Yeah. Or you just make it into a, a Latin mass thing, or whatever. Or my recycling idea. Also, I like that. Right. Okay. So what about um, you know a big question that's going to be in our major global schism. Which let's admit there already is a material schism right now, if not a formal schism. Everybody pretty much recognize that. So you got a big schism, and then you guys say, "Well, what about Vatican II? How are we going to s- solve Vatican II?" So here's what I would say in Latin. I would say, "Look, when Paul VI closed Vatican II, he said it did not make any form of extraordinary dogmatic pronouncements." Here's the quote from December 7th, 1965, as Paul VI closes Vatican II, quote, the magisterium of the church did not wish to pronounce itself under the form of extraordinary dogmatic pronouncements, end quote. So Vatican II, unlike the previous 20 councils, has a little asterisk next to it. (laughs) At the end of it, the Pope said, hey, we didn't make any extraordinary dogmatic pronouncements. A few months later, let me, one more quote. A few months later, Paul VI says, quote, in view of the pastoral nature of the council, it has avoided mm-hmm. proclaiming in an extraordinary manner any dogma carrying the mark of infallibility, end quote. That's uh, 12th of January, 1966. So I would say, look, it's a pastoral council. As Pope, I'll leave it on the register as a ecumenical council, but the lay faithful are not called to submit to anything doctrinal or dogmatic within the pages of those documents. That's it. The question is that as always, I mean, this is not a new topic on TNT. He said that and that's fine. It's like you, like you just pointed out, it's good to have it on the books saying something de dicto explicitly. He didn't have to say that though. You know why? Because what, what would be irreversibly binding um, on the lay or on priests around the world from Vatican II. It's, it's sui oh, generis. tons of stuff. When it, Religious liberty. Uh, Muslims worship the same God. Buddhists can true. attain perfect attachment. Um, holy orders is restricted to bishop, priests, and deacon. Not the Thomistic way. I mean, all kinds of things are in that document you, that you are mean objectionable. You Nostra Aetate? Nostra Aetate, Dignitatis Humanae. Uh, even in Lumen Gentium, um, the idea that the church Paragraph subsists 26. in yeah. the, the Catholic Church and not is the Catholic Church, which is kind of against what Pius XII wrote earlier. I mean, there's there's at least off the top of my head a dozen passages that solid, faithful, orthodox Catholic theologians and scholars that I know on both sides of the camp seriously debate and have a hard time well, reconciling. Well, no, I know. Let, let me re- me me too. Obviously, I know there are issues people have with Vatican II. I, I have them as well. What I'm saying is that's not what an ecumenical council does. Like, maybe we should say it one more time. An ecumenical council rectifies heresies and, and anathematizes right. them. And Vatican II is sui generis. It is the single one that did not do this. So it is not only acting in a capacity that is uncomfortable for people with the way the church was before, but it's acting in a capacity, Vatican II, uh, a doctrinal capacity, whereas before it was really pretty much just dogmatic. So yeah. it, it, it created sort of pseudo doctrine the, while saying this is not doctrine, where it's like, this is not, this is, this is the distinct, the very distinction between doctrine and dogma anyway, uh, uh, of, of 
an ecumenical council is supposed to anathematize a heresy and thereby announce and bump an already traditionalized doctrine into dogma. That's what it does. So all I'm saying about Vatican II is there's tons of bad stuff that's being squinted at. But since they're they're not anathematizing no. the Latin Mass, then that would be a real problem. They're not anathematizing the position of the social kingship of Christ. Uh, the whole well, thing was just. I mean, ad it hoc. doesn't anathematize it, but it, it dogmatized the opposite. So it when taught, you go back it, to some it, would say it taught the opposite, even if it didn't dogmatize it. And that's kind of Paul well, the sixth point. The council avoided proclaiming any extraordinary manner, manner uh, proclaiming any extraordinary manner, any doctrine carrying the mark of infallibility. But that's that's precise. That's precisely what I'm saying. So they can acknowledge it, and it's not bad for all the people out there. But I fear that 99% of Catholics don't don't even even ones maybe that watch the show don't acknowledge or understand how what an oddity, yeah, what a novelty Vatican II was anyway. So you don't technically have to. Yeah, you don't have to take it off the books. I guess that's what I'm saying. You just leave it. Yeah, on. but as a teacher of the faithful, as the Pope, stuff. I would want them to say. Don't let your conscience be burdened by this. So if someone says to you, well, look, the council says that Muslims worship the same God as us. Don't feel that you need to do apologetics for that. Just say, it's Vatican II. It could be a fallible statement because the council did not bear the mark of infallibility. Sure. Hence, it could contain error, and that looks like one of them, so... Yeah, you don't go, but I mean, this is the difference between um, the holding in a case and dicta in a case. Like, you know, when when you read, pick pick a an overturn that you like, any of your the famous overturns that are actually good. Pick the famous overturn uh, in the future, also since we're doing Fantasy Day, of Roe versus Wade. Not everything in that, you know, maybe ten page opinion. Um, is binding, or not everything in all the concurrences, because sometimes they write concurrences because they want to express a differing view of the majority opinion just to get it on the books, is not all binding law. It's not all binding black letter law. It's what we call dicta. And it's like, basically, all of Vatican II, by its own omission, admission, explicit admissions now, but by its procedural admission, by the fact that they anathematize nothing, all of it is non-dogmatic that's so, right it's a non-dogmatic council yeah it's non-dogmatic yeah. it has a little it's, asterisk next to it. when you look over it, it's a non-dogmatic council and you're like oh what was the point of that right because councils are dogmatic in their essence <laughs> right. so yeah you i might say that i might be like i don't know that one of the progressions of the holy spirit might be to give us gloss a little more gloss on this term what does it mean to be an ecumenical council mm -hmm. council of jerusalem was a council, obviously, but it wasn't ecumenical. Maybe we're, maybe we've learned in the last 50 years, Pope Pius XIII might say, that, yes, Vatican II, or, or the Second Pentecost, as JP2 would call it, is what, it still finds the council, it didn't anathematize anything that shouldn't have been anathematized, it didn't anathematize anything, but it wasn't ecumenical without that perp that binding per I don't know. Someone, some liturgist or ecclesiologist could check me, but yeah. all twenty of the first twenty. Wouldn't that be a surprise of the Holy Spirit? It's a boom! <laughs> surprise of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I we can, the Holy Spirit does surprise us sometimes. Yeah. It's just it's not always bad and it's not yeah. always sacrilegious. Yeah, maybe maybe I, you I, just say, Well, I'm redefining the term instead of using ecumenical council. I'm using dogmatic council, and we've had right. 20 dogmatic councils, and Vatican II is not one of them. It's like not that. a dogmatic council. I like that. It's got an asterisk next to it. Even though more bishops attended Vatican II than any previous council in the history of the church, it was the most populated, really? it was the most ecumenical, global uh, church of all times, I mean, a uh, council of all times, so... That's just because the world's population is too big. Yeah. That's what they'd say. Yeah. yeah. There are too many. So let's see. What else will we do? We've got the liturgy taken care of. We've got... Um... Oh, you know what else I'd like to do if I were Pope? I would go back to the Lenten stations and actually try to say the masses at all the Lenten stational churches. Mm -hmm. 
That'd be pretty cool. I, like I don't know when, when the last time that was done, but it's in the missile. Like, really do Good Friday at Santa Croce. Right. Right. Do Agreed. Easter Sunday at Santa Maria Maggiore. Uh, Holy Saturday is at the Lateran. Like, purposely do them at the right spot. That'd be symbolically amazing. And you get, and yeah, no, I like that. And you get some work. You get some run out of all those beautiful basilicas there. He never, as yeah. it is now, they're just in spoliation. It, as it is killing. now, everything's on the steps of St. Peter, on the steps, under that lame right. little patio thing they erected with the slanty <laughs> roof. Slanty shanty, yeah. Yeah, the slanty yeah. shanty. Why? we? It's a glorious basilica right behind you, and you're, you're saying mass under a little metal hut on the stairs. Yeah, yeah. Don't like I've it. I've been to masses inside. I've been to pontifical yeah. mass, three pontifical masses inside the building, and it's so much better than oh. the than the uh, Palm Sunday outdoors mass I went to. And I did an Easter Sunday outdoors mass. It's lame. It's like, yeah, you have this amazing St. Peter's. Yeah. You're literally, <laughs> the churchmen of the time were taking corruptish indulgences to erect this thing. Let's get some work out of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Also, one thing, this would be a, a bit of a thumb in the eye to, I guess it's, we, we, we switched to the show over to a we are a poke. Well, I guess every man's uh, well, want a little more power. If yeah. we are, if we're Pius the Thirteenth, or it's or the Platonic form guy. of our mind regarding the Pope. That's Pius the Thirteenth. Either way, yeah. whether we admit it or not, yeah, it's the Platonic I form of, of of piousness, piousness, not not piety, but Pius the Thirteenth. Piousness. He would. You'd have to undo the reforms to the breviary that even Pius X did. Yeah, I would go back. That'd be hardcore. That'd be hardcore. Would be dope core though. Yeah. I mean, it would be. It's because, not supposed to be possible to save the whole office and all that in yeah. the time that it's taken. Yeah, now. because just for people who like we're getting into the liturgical minutia, but before Pius X, the entire Psalter was gone through, and Pius X interrupted that flow, and so that was sort of like the beginning of tinkering with liturgy was under Pius X. As much as I love Pius X, pray for us. Yeah, that, I mean, if you're going to be consistent, you would have to go back and say, look, I'm restoring the breviary pre-Pius X. Holy Week is pre-Bugnini. Mass has everything pre-Bugnini. Just how everything worked perfectly for centuries and centuries, for a millennia, for a millennium, we're going back to these patterns. Yeah, I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. I'm glad you, you brought it up. Say, you couldn't be like old world order or whatever. And be, you couldn't and be doing saying the, that and be... And not do that. And you doing the like, well, doing the weak sauce that. breviary. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. You, that's what libs do. Is they're like we we hate all this conservative stuff, and we also hate this inconsistent liberal stuff. But it's our friends, so we're gonna yeah. do it. It's like no. That's it's like you know. Be... We were talking about the unicorn Novus Ordos, and I hear from all these people, and they're talking about, mm-hmm. oh man, I go to the Novus, you know, unicorn Novus Ordo. I'm like, well, do you have me... lay Eucharistic? Ministers of Holy Communion. Well, yeah. Well, you don't have a unicorn, dude. Yeah, what are you talking about? Is it at? Well, it's it's unicorn, but it's not at. Or you're like, it's not unicorn, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. What are you? That's what are you a, thinking is so unicorn. That's a white it? horse without a horn on its head. Explain <laughs> to me how that's a unicorn. It's not. Yeah, they're, they're no, like, no, no, no. I like, found well, a unicorn. It's just hornless. Yeah. It's like okay. No. They're like we have everything in the unicorn mass, but we don't have a communion element. You don't have a unicorn of sorta. To have a unicorn novus order, you have to have all the elements that we discussed. There are no buts. A unicorn yeah. has everything but a butt, yeah. right? You don't. You don't have. It's literally just. It's 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 all or none. It's carte blanche. Or you get you get the whole deal, or you don't. That's what makes it a unicorn. Right. Same thing when, pe- yeah. when people are like, oh, you know, have you ever seen the the unicorn, you know, uh, ranking system of hotness that mm-hmm. that that one guy did? For, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, you have to watch it. Okay. You're, you're watching it after this. So I'll send it to you. All right. But it's the same deal. I, I ever most people out there probably have seen it. But um, he says this is this is your unicorn zone. Uh, you know, when a when a it's the crazy hot matrix when you're okay. ranking okay. women <laughs> and uh, and in the crazy hot matrix there is no like well I found a ten a ten crazy uh, non crazy yeah. attempt. She's, she's crazy hot, but she doesn't have any hair. 
You're like, <laughs> right. She's it, got she, great facial features, yeah. but she she's bald. It's like I'm sorry <laughs> for that, but you can't be the unicorn. You're yeah, probably right. more attractive yeah. without hair than anyone I've ever seen without hair. Still, you're not a unicorn. Right. I like hair. Yeah. So the Novus. I mean, if you go to the Novus Ordo and you're like, well, he retains liturgy. He uses incense and chant. He's at Orientum. We have an altar rail, but we have, you know, our grandmother is distributing Holy Communion. You're like, it's not a unicorn, bud. That's like the one of the worst things yeah. about it. Yeah. All right, and so. the same thing with at Orientum. You have to do it. Yeah. All right. So I mean, what else, gone, what else needs the to be? Yeah. The Novus Ordo would be gone. People it's like gone. people would show their grandkids like YouTube videos if they even have YouTube videos in the future. Like this is what we had to go through. No, I, and they're really. like, what? Why is that priest wearing like a polyester thing over him? Like, well, that was what chasubles looked like back then. This is like, why are there banners hanging on the brick walls in the sanctuary? With, with food. With grapes, yeah, is, with grapes yeah. on them and, and wheat. Yeah. Like, that's right. what we were subject. These were the, the days of penance in the church when we didn't have good liturgy. Your choirs were singing hymns. They were singing Jesus is a friend of mine at yeah. mass. It'd yeah. You can't write it, bro. I know. You can't write how straight. And yeah, people like, out there that are like, have only gone to the unicorn might be listening to this like, is it, is it really that strange? It is. Yeah. It go, is. If you, if you it's attend, tough. if you attend Latin mass for a year and then you go back, you're like, what is what this? <laughs> what is going on? It's like, this is an SNL skit, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Novus right. Ordo, the New World Order Mass, as I've taken to calling it. The New World Order Mass is one giant SNL skit, but it's not funny. Well, so it's more like a modern SNL. It's, it's, it's like a modern giant, SNL. embarrassing skit. It's, it's not, not funny. funny. Yeah. But it's kind of meant to be by the liberals. They tried really hard. Us. They tried really hard, but it's like old SNL's better. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. So, yeah, we'd have that. I, the, the main problem in the whole Pius XIII reign would be dealing with the fallout and the schism. You know, that'd be I just excommunicated. I'd be like, yeah, you but it would be me? look at me straight. But I mean, yeah. to be See. wait for it, pastoral, how <laughs> would you how would you loop in all the people of good faith who are just totally confused in Chicago? You're like, well, what's the real church? You, I guess you would just say, well, the church is in union with Pius the 13th. If you're not in union with Pius the 13th, you are excommunicated. Oh, I would also immediately yeah. shut down all conferences of bishops usccb done agreed i, I forgot that one yeah that would be oh, gone yeah. no conference of german one. bishops done conference of german bishops i don't want to say on publicly what my what my yeah. edict would be yeah. but it would be <laughs> right. more more aggressive right. conference of german bishops yeah. that one wouldn't be in Lat that one wouldn't be in latin no yeah that well that one would be you have to see me because yeah, there, there's some bad news for you. That's it's, it's not just that the right. conference of bishops is done. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll tell you guys one on one yeah. what your fate is. But they would definitely but, um, lose their pension for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, what about what about actually having trials? It'd be interesting if you said, okay, um, I'm you can have an appeal with me, but you will be tried in a court. Well, so you you uh, so yeah, so you'd have like Schoenborn Schoenborn be like wait wait and you'd be like well you Schoenborn actually your trial date set for uh, March twenty eighth are you ready for that mm -hmm. okay show mm -hmm. up be like the trial on Batman two with Bane you know like I would bring I'd stop <laughs> calling the the apostolic signature of that I'd call it the in, inquis, Inquisitor again well I'd no the back... the Inquisitor was was the Holy Office CDF no I thought it was the app. No, the, was the signature. No, the signature oversaw like a like royal marriage annulments and trial of like bishops. The signature. If you're wrong. Yeah, yeah. I'll, but no, well, you could I'll, you could have them tried by you could rename the Holy Office the Inquisition and you could have the prefect called the Inquisitor and you could have them tried there. Yeah, whatever it is, I would bring it back. <laughs> okay. Inquisitor like, would be I, back, yeah. And he would he would overhear, he'd be like fifty feet up yeah. with like a giant gavel, and he would like Have you ever seen that Star Trek where toes. Q is in like a giant red robe seated up, seating above everybody? Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, no, great, but it sounds, that's a it great sounds clip. like what I would do. Yeah, it's, really? it, he kind of looks like a giant, immense cardinal over everybody. That's how it would look. That's, that's what was in my mind, in yeah. my platonic form. Yeah. So, yeah, it would be that. And it would, uh, I guess, so we're kind of going more the direction that HBO thought we would. So HBO, 
Yeah. You were right. This is what I would do. I'd bring back the Grand Inquisitor, and he would he would uh, relentlessly seek out. He'd be the the scourge of heterodoxy yep. and cowardice, and he would root it all out of the church. And yeah, it would be it would be cool because I mean, there's nothing cooler than calling one of the calling. Yeah, I just think it would be. Amazing I think a trial would be Inquisitor. would be a good example for the world. I would also bring yeah. back the minor orders that would happen. And then I'm not sure what I would do sure. about seminary. I imagine there'd be an enormous influx of vocations. Of course. Tens of thousands of young men becoming priests under Pius the 13th. Be amazing. Right. But I don't know what I would do about seminaries. I've actually thought about just abolishing seminaries. Maybe they're no good. Why? I mean, if you if you I think if you do away with the people, like like the buildings themselves, you could just Well, I mean, up until the- Trent, there were no seminaries. It was all like apprenticeship under a priest. It wasn't yeah. codified. And because of the Reformation, like, okay, we got to train the guys. I don't know. Maybe, maybe what you I do is, is you set up mega seminaries that you can control. I mean, the bad thing is if you die and they end up electing Francis II, he controls them. But maybe, you know, you have centralized seminarian training at a big at a big seminary that has a rigorous curriculum. Maybe I would write, that's what I do. I would just maybe keep the seminaries in place, but I would write the curriculum and issue it as a modu proprio and say, you have to do this. And if you don't, well, here's, you're out. Here's the workaround. W- w- yeah. I haven't thought about that detail too much, but, but the workaround is definitely bring back the oath against modernism. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. That, I mean, that would be like, right no, away. no so, one would become a cardinal or bishop or priest or even deacon without, Saying the oath against Martinism. Absolutely. I would, what I would do, no, joking aside, you know, like death penalty decrees, I, I was joking about that for now. But uh, <laughs> what I would do is if one person had published or, or tallied in heresy, I'd be like, okay, no, no professorship slots, you know? Oh, Even for if sure. they'd recanted yeah. and now they're a conservative, I'd be like, sorry, we do judge here in the reign of Pius the 13th mm-hmm. on your track record. Yeah. I want I only agree. unblemished con, uh, theological conservatives and philosophical yeah. conservatives. Like, yeah. I know that would have done away with several decent theologians that that allegedly, you know, toiled in in liberalism, theological liberalism in their youth. But I don't need them, right? Yeah. I just need lifelong conservatives because I don't want someone that dithers. If you can dither too, you can dither fro. Yeah, is my point of view. Yeah, that's good. You just have a very your legacy would be examined. If you're a theologian or if you're yes. a bishop. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. I, I want to say case-by-case case basis, but then at that point, it's impossible. So I don't, I don't know how I'd handle that. Well, there's no perfect system. That's the other thing. Right. I mean, if you get a little power, I've never really had a little, you know, two, two 20s in terms of the power game to rub together my whole life. Once you get a little power, I'm sure you'd be like, Yeah. Yeah, city. This this is still. We're trying to erect a city of God. We're doing our best. Right. But everything everything this side of the eschaton is still yeah. utterly fallible. That's what I'm There's saying. No You're going to have a cardinal, even if you have 20 of your best bro cardinals. One of them is going to stab you in the back. It's just power. It's politics. He's going to yeah. get infiltrated by the UN or the EU or something's going to happen. Get good guys flip for a number of reasons. So you are going to be dealing with betrayal in your midst. And I think you just have to have an iron fist as Pius the Thirteenth. Just clean it up when you find out. Dismiss. Like when Paul yeah. VI sent Bugnini to Iran after they found his yeah. Freemasonic briefcase. He's like I would have done Pius the Thirteenth. CO two, wait for it. Antarctica. Right. <laughs> so like, but I'll freeze to death. He was like, that's the idea. Yeah, <laughs> or or Iran. Yeah, right. Yeah. You won't freeze to death, you'll be yeah. You'll be have uh, your head cut off to death. Right. All right. Well, I mean, oh, well, canon law. Did we mention canon law? Canon law no, would have to it. be reformed. I don't know if I would, if I would temporarily turn back the clock to the 1917 Pio Benedictine Code, or if I would just immediately commission a new, a new code. Hmm. I don't know how I how I do that, but the code of canon law is crucial. Yeah. Oh, and for then sure. for any kind of abuse, anybody. You're done, no pension, removed from the clerical state, it's over. There's just right. zero tolerance for anyone who hurts kids. 
Absolutely. How about well? How about we'll ask last question as we close up. How about any any violations of celibacy? Not to say hetero and homo are the same. Yeah. There's, there's a spectrum of gravity. Homo's worse. I would I would have even hetero. Yeah, even hetero violations. You gotta you're go. Out. You're out, dude. You gotta go. No we, sex stuff. Sex is wherever we gets hold corrupted. you to the highest standard as a cleric. And if you break that, you're just, I mean, it's, you know, you can go work at Walmart. You can get a job. You can go be a lawyer or doctor or such. You know, you're a smart guy. But in this context, everybody has to be above reproach. So, adios. Right. That's, that's probably the 13th. May he live long. Oxios. May he reign. May yeah. he reign for 200 years. Yeah. Maybe live to 400 like uh, yeah. Moses. Well, the good thing is, is if you restricted your cardinals to your boys to 20, 30, even up, maybe up to 70, and you, oh, I also make sure that you can vote after you're 80. I mean, un, unlike now, once you turn 80, you can't vote. I would take that off the books. Definitely. Wisdom comes from age. It's the crown of, gray hair is the crown of wisdom, so I'd want a lot of gray-haired cardinals. So then I would, I would die, hopefully with last rites, and with a smile in my heart, knowing that my successor would be Pius the Fourteenth, and then Fifteenth, and that the souls of the faithful on earth are safeguarded by reverent liturgy that worships the Blessed Trinity, true doctrine, unadulterated, and a joy in their heart that their papa, their daddy in Rome, loves them. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I like it. Now, if you want the real story, go watch our previous video, Who Will Be the Next Pope? It will crush everything that we discussed. <laughs> in he will episode. not be Pius the 13th worthy. Not. Yes, this is, this, is, this is a video you want to save. You want to bookmark this video. And every time you're sad and depressed, you just come watch this fantasy episode. It's a safe space for mm. Catholics, traditional Catholics. Come in and listen to the to the happy reforms of Pius the Thirteenth. Mm -hmm. All right, well, everybody, Agreed. like this video, subscribe, hit the bell, tell all your friends about TNT episodes, share these episodes on Twitter and Facebook. There's a lot of shares on Twitter and a lot of shares on Facebook, for, but Facebook brings a, a good bit of traffic in, so that's good to see. And um, pray the rosary, pray for a new pope. We're in Lent. We're fasting. Many of you are doing hardcore fast, pre-Vatican II fast. Some of you are even modifying the medieval, patristic, Lenten fast, not eating till three, black fast, etc. So offer those for the Pope. Who knows? God may be merciful and say, okay, I'll give you a pious at 13th. The prayers of the faithful reach up to the heart of God. That'd be awesome. So, all right. Signing out. <laughs>